just what he said. He is a good God. Hallelujah. Grateful to this morning. For those of you first time watching, thank you. God bless you. Welcome. And for those of you that have been following, following our ministry, thank you so much for being a part. We don't take it lightly. You could have gone anywhere to any virtual service, but you stopped here this morning, and I give God praise for that on today. Well, I believe that God is speaking to us on this morning, and I want to just share this word with you quickly. Hallelujah. So today, hallelujah, I know this is our third Sunday and it's been now maybe eight, nine weeks we have been in this season. But I, I know God is getting ready to release us, to release us as a people and to release us as a body, as the body of Christ. And so I want to encourage some persons on today. And the reason this message for me is passionate is because I remember how, how hard it was and how much I struggled to understand who God was, to hear his voice and to understand how he speaks and to understand what he wanted from me. And there's so many persons on today don't know and understand why am I here? What am I even doing here? There are a lot of questions asking why, when, how, who. And you, there are a lot of persons that are struggling with trying to find their identity. There are a lot of persons that you know you're gifted but you still don't understand how to use that gift. Well, this morning, I just have a word that will encourage your soul, body, and mind on this morning. And so today, our topic is uncharted gifts. Uncharted gifts. And so when we look at the word uncharted, it means it's not shown or located on a map, it's unexplored, it's unknown. So it's a place that is as a terrain where no one knows. And so I want to read 1 Corinthians, or I would read 1 Corinthians 12, 7 through 12, and I'm reading from the ESV version, and that is, um, it's saying, to each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For to one is given the Spirit through the Spirit of utterance of wisdom, to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, and to another faith of the same Spirit, to another gift of healing by the same by the one Spirit, to another working of miracles, and to another prophecy, to another the ability to distinguish between spirits, and to another various kinds of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. These, all these are empowered by one and the same Spirit who, appropriation, who appropriately gives to each individual as he wills. Uncharted gifts. People might call them renegades. 
outlaw, rebellious people, stiff-necked people, whatever the names. But this morning, I call them uncharted gifts. Now, today, I want to hear, I want to say to you, when a gift is given, if you give somebody a gift, and you know, if you take it back, they'll call you an Indian giver. Now, I guess the Indians would give gifts and take it back. But when you give a gift, you normally, you give that gift out of the pureness of your heart because you want to show your affection or how you feel about that person. You want to show your appreciation for a person. So every person, including you, were born with a gift. When you came in this earth, the first day you came, the minute that sperm hit that egg, your gifting and everything of who you would be was already in, on the inside of you. You were born with a gift. You were born with a, a gift to make an indelible mark, to make a change in the earth realm. Now, I want to talk to you today, and then we're going to go through some five steps that I want to try to help some of you. Uh, it's cost me a long time, and it, I mean, it's like, it's been a desert, it's been a wilderness, it's been a lot of crying, it's been a lot of tears, it's been a time of depression, time of suicidal thoughts, because if you don't understand who you are and where you're going, it is hard to really stay focused. It's hard to really give your best when you don't know what you're giving your best to. Amen? And so, like I have these gift cards. Now, if you go in Walmart or any place and you purchase these gift cards, and if you don't activate these gift cards, they'll just be cards, okay? They'll just, the amount will be there. If there's a $100 card, the $100 will stay on that card. But if I don't activate it by paying for it through the cashier, I've just gotten a card, card worth $100, but it's no activation. So the gift is the same. You have a gift on the inside of you, but it needs to be activated. Say activated. So the definition of activation is to make active or to have something that is moving. So you have to make it active. And there's also a second part, reactive. Sometimes the gift has to be reactive. And so I want you to understand this. Activation has to happen in your gift for your life. And so we're going to go, I don't want to go ahead of myself. So I want you to listen carefully. The first step, you know, there are a lot of persons. And let me tell you, God called so many persons to do so many great work. And the beautiful part about it is we're all tailor-made. I'm talking because God is spiritually preparing us because there's going to be a great harvest. There's going to be a great revelation. God is really um, putting himself, he's really showing himself in the earth realm. And so he wants his people to be ready. He don't want us to be caught slipping. He don't want us to be caught not understanding who he is or what we're doing. He wants us to understand the time. He wants us to know him. He wants us to understand when he speaks. He wants us to smell him. He wants us to touch him. He wants us to know every aspect of who he is because we have that right. We are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Places That means we have some rights as a child of God because of Jesus Christ. And so when we understand our rights, you know when you know um, you can fight or you can beat somebody or you got somebody back in your, you walk around and your chest, your chest stick out because you have confidence in what you're doing. But when you're not, when you don't know what you're doing, it, it kind of give you, become bewildered and it causes you to be in a place of where you're confused and frustrated when your gifts are not activated. And sometimes our gifts can be activated too soon. Sometimes our gifts can be activated too soon. This has happened to so many people. And the gifts have been, act- it's happened to me where my gifts were activated too soon. I didn't know who I was. And the most dangerous thing is for a person who is called by God or anyone that is a child of God, even in the secular world, to not recognize that they're gifted. Because if you don't recognize your gifted, Satan will capitalize on that gift. And, it, and before, when by the time you recognize who you are, it would have been too late sometimes. Sometimes what you should have done and what you could have produced when you should have produced it, you weren't able to produce it because you were so busy following uh, of the voice of a stranger. And not because you, not, not that it was your fault, but because a lot of times we go into places, just like we go on a job. I remember when I first went into Wendy's. In the Bahamas, they, I was one of the first crew that opened Wendy's in 1998 um, in the Bahamas. And I remember the first six months, they asked me to be a crew leader. So that was a leadership position. They just told me, I can be a crew leader. Okay, bam, I'm a crew leader. I'm telling people what to do. All right? So now I, I, I got promoted again to a, an assistant manager and then to a store manager. 
But still, there was no activation of the gift. There was no teaching. There was no training. So the gift was there, but it wasn't activated to its its fullest extent. So I was leading by what I thought was leadership. And I I was chaotic. I I, I was a beast. I was hurting a lot of people. I was just firing people because if you look at me too hard and you didn't come to work, you fired. If you didn't come in your, your correct uniform, you fired. Because I was a gift that was uncharted. I was an uncharted gift. I had no idea. I was stepping into the area that was uncharted for me. I have No one ever trained me. No one showed me what to do. No one told me the five steps to leadership. No one told me that, hey, this is what you do. Um, this is how you speak to people. But I had to learn the hard way. And so I don't want you to have to go through all of that if you don't have to, to come to the place of where you understand what's on the inside of you. The Bible says in the earthen vessel there is a treasure. There's a treasure on the inside of you. Whether you believe it or not, I don't care how many mess up you think you may be, there is a treasure that is waiting to be discovered. Now, Satan has managed to fool a lot of people and to make them believe that God don't want that treasure no more. That you already, you're not deserving of that. That you are, you, you're so messed up that he can't use that no more. Or that that diamond is no longer a diamond. That's a, 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 a sonica or what you call that? Um, the other diamond. You know the little fake thing that we look in the airing. Yes. And so we, we you know, and so we, we look at it and, and, and then and instead of us looking like a, a goal, it, it, we feel like we're from out of the machine where we put the 25 cents and get those little rings out. And so Satan managed to fool a lot of people or deceive a lot of people into believing that they can't do it. Believing that they're not good enough. Believing that they're not qualified. Believing that no one, they never amount to nothing. And so you have a lot of people around here going into uncharted places and not being prepared for it. And that's why Satan is capitalizing on many of God's people. And many of them are stuck in wilderness. They're stuck with chains. They're stuck in cages. They're stuck in dungeons. They're stuck in their very past. Can't move forward because of the uncharted gift. So I want to say to you this morning, if you out there, and you might have been in church and you're really tired and you've been here, there, everywhere. It's only the hands of God that was on my life. Because you go places, and I want us to be careful. We go places, and a lot of times, you know, the first time you get in the church and you can sing. I remember, I don't consider myself a singer. I just like to sing. And I just went and I sang a song, um, a song for, for a testimony. And literally, the next Sunday, I was on the praise team. I just started the church maybe two weeks before that. And the next Sunday, I was literally on the praise team. I'm not kidding. A month later, I was the youth leader. About two months later, I had keys for the church. Don't know me. Never sat me down. Never asked me a question. Never, um, never checked me for my, for my behavior. No type of talking. Nobody ever said to me, listen, you need to sit down. You're too prideful. Or I see this in your life. None of that was said to me. So I had a gift on the inside of me, but it was uncharted to me. I didn't know it was not, I was not on the map and I'm still not on the map, but I was not known. I was not, I I had no idea of what was on the inside of me, you know, but person saw what was on the inside of me and I was so insecure that I could not accept what they were saying. I could not understand what they were saying. I didn't know why they would give me a mic to preach. I hated to preach. I don't know why they would give me a mic to sing. I didn't think I could sing, but they would always put me in a leadership position and I would always mess it up because I had no activation of the gift. There was no step. There was no training. There was no come and sit in the- theological school. Come to Bible school. Come and learn this. Let me teach you some things. And this is what is happening. We try to fulfill positions instead of fulfilling God's vision for the life of the church. And so instead of fulfilling the vision and being waiting on God and hearing what God is saying, we try to fill positions so we can look like the church in Revelation. Revelation 3. But the thing about it is what I like about God is it doesn't matter. That's why he gives us the demonstration. He said where there's two or three in any place I will be in the midst. And so a lot of times we think we have to have five, ten. But the thing about it is what you need for that season is right in the house. 
But sometimes we don't have the time to activate it. We don't have the time to develop it. People don't want to develop people no more. Leaders don't have time to develop people no more. And sometimes they don't just, they just don't care. Or sometimes people are just, have been so messed up that they don't feel like they need to be developed. I have came across some persons. I said, okay, you come to the church. Okay, I need you to sit for a little while. And they were like, well, I never sit down before. And I ain't about to sit down now. I don't know anything about that. And that's not what I'm going to do. I want to preach. I want to sing on the praise team. I want to do this. Uncharted gifts. Uncharted gifts. Understand this. And so now, our first step. Because I had a long, miserable road. Every ministry I went, it was a long, miserable road. Because I was doing the work, but still not activated. So I was just working. Working, having the gift. Knowing, having, having the gift that God placed on the side of me, but don't understand how to be able how to produce or how to how to be able to walk in this gift or the gift and the talent that God gave to me so I need us to understand the first thing we need I want you to listen carefully the first thing you're going to need and I'm talking to those of you out there who've been hurt and those of them who say you've given up on God I'm talking to those of you sitting right in the church all these years you might be over 50 60 and you still don't know who you are you still don't know what you're supposed to do you still don't feel activated you're still trying to figure out life you're still trying to get healed from that past hurt from that past rejection you're still trying to forgive yourself for all the things you did I want to let you know today that there is help in the house of the Lord that God sent me by to tell you today that you will you will walk in divine purpose that his plans for you according to Jeremiah 29 11 has not changed his plans are still to prosper you and to give you an expected end God don't look at the product like how we go in the store and say well I don't want that I don't want that you know we pick up the stuff no he looks at every creation and sees the treasure on the inside of them and so the first step is exposure this is what an uncharted person needs they need to be exposed they need to have have experiences and abilities and areas in which to grow. Make sure you can see a living, breathing person who has excellent work in that area. So persons who are who are, are more um, who are more experienced in a certain area, if, if they're experienced in a leadership, then they should be able to get the person to exposure. Now, I'm not talking about exposure where you go on a flyer and you start singing and, and all over. That's not the type of exposure I'm talking about. That comes in God's own time. But the exposure I'm talking about is where the older women will treat the younger women. They will teach them how to admonish themselves. They will teach them how to dress. They will teach them how to be good wives. They will teach them how to be good mothers. That's the type of exposure I'm talking about. Being able to function in the midst of things. Being able to know who you are, starting with yourself, starting with how you treat yourself, how you love yourself, how you see yourself, developing who you are, looking in the mirror and loving the image that you see, looking in the mirror and not hating what you see, but loving what you see, whether you got some rose on the side or whether you don't. You love the image that you see because you are going to be the best you. So the exposure I'm getting is older men looking at younger men and saying to them, hey, let me show you how to do this. Let me show you how to dress. If older men took the time and maybe taught a lot of the young boys how to dress, they wouldn't follow after these stars. They wouldn't go after them. But you see, the thing about it is, is the stars, there's a lot of stars like Beyonce and those persons, they have become a model for our young people because a lot of times we don't take the time to expose them to things, to teach them how to do things, to teach them how to go in a restaurant and to eat with a fork and a knife. We don't teach them how to tie a tie. We don't teach them the simplistic things in life. And so we just allow them to go on and allow them to go and feel like it's just going to fall upon them. In 2 Timothy 2, 3, and 5, the older women likewise, that you may be reverent in behavior, not slanderous, given to much wine, teachers and good in things, that they may admonish the young women to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, homemakers, good, 
obedient to their own husband, the word of God, so that the word of God may not be blasphemed. But in the church or in even in the secular world, a lot of times people will capitalize on what they see. They will capitalize on an individual that don't know. They're going into uncharted areas and they have no idea of what they're doing. And so because what happens is they're just working the gift, but the gift is not activated. Without activation, that gift is just sitting there. It's not producing and doing what God said. God told us in Genesis 1, he said we must be fruitful, we must multiply and we must also be to the place of where we replenish the earth. He was talking about our gifting, not just children but the gifting. In our gifting we're supposed to have dominion. Our gift is supposed to be able to let the light shine on us. We're supposed to be walking in divine favor. We're supposed to be walking that people will see the light on the inside of us. We're supposed to be walking that people will see Christ on the inside of us and glorify the Father. So in our gift, when God talked about that in Genesis, he was not just talking about repro- re, um, he was not talking about us reproducing, but also in us reproducing our gift. So we're teaching somebody. If you notice all the great leaders, watch what they did in the Bible. I know I'm going ahead of myself, but watch what they did. Every time God was about to take them off the scene, Moses had a what? A Joshua. And what did he do? He taught Joshua how to take his position. <laughs> Listen to me. Elijah, and I'm going to talk about him again. Elijah went to Elisha and teach Elisha how to take over his position. Elijah was an uncharted gift. By the time Elisha finished with it, he activated that uncharted gift. And everybody know about him because we read about him. We talk about his 16 miracles he did. Now, Elisha activated Jehu. Because Elijah avoided Jezebel totally. That was not his mission. Elijah avoided Jezebel. But Jehu, when Jehu got on the scene, he did not waste time. He knew what he had to do. He went and he killed Jezebel according to the word of God. So in other words, every person in the Bible, if you notice, there was an activation. They were exposed to who they were. When God came to Samson, he said to Samson, when God came to Samson, his mother, his father, Manoah, he told him, he said, listen, I'm going to give you a son. He's going to be a Nazarite. He should not touch any dead thing. He should not drink any strong drink. And he should not allow his head to grow. God didn't just say, oh, no, oh my God, your child, oh, she's anointed. My God from Zion, she's a gift. People trying to figure out what, what gift? What anointed gift? All right, child of destiny, what that mean? But God gave Manoah specific instruction that this child will come to save my people. God gave Manoah specific instruction how to teach the child. Child, when Moses was in the children was in the wilderness, God didn't just have them there wondering. Then he was teaching them the statues. Of, of God and the principles of who God was. And as a matter of fact, when the first set of people, children died because of their hardness of heart, God allowed Moses in Deuteronomy, which means second law, to teach them again, to teach the new generation again. He said, as a matter of fact, let them have it in the table of their heart. That means that uh, it don't have to be on paper, but it will be in their heart. They will say, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light in my pathway. I don't need to carry around the big Bible to let you make you feel like I know the word. I don't have to carry my Bible everywhere. The word should be right in here, in my heart. It should be in my heart. Are you all hearing me on this morning? Our second thing is education. I want you to listen to me. Those of you who've been frustrated in ministry, you've been frustrated so long. You were an uncharted gift and you're still trying to find your way. Even though you are the pastor's adjutant, even though you're the prayer warrior, even though you're the praise and worship leader, even though you've been promoted to a minister, even though you've been raised up as an associate pastor, you're still trying to figure out what is it really I'm called to do. So now here is it. We need education. I think I just talked about that. We need education. We need to be taught. Every person was taught. Let me say that again. Every person in the Bible was taught. Paul, when he got hit down on the road to Damascus, he did not just go preaching and, and, and all over the place. Um, preaching the gospel and say, oh, I saw Jesus. Oh, my God, he hit me down. I want you to know. He had to be taught. 
So he went for three years and he was taught the ways and the things of God. Understand what I'm saying. Before that, he was taught in the temple. As a matter of fact, they were meeting in the temple all the time and they would teach. The scholars would get into the temple and teach the younger men. They would show them the things that they need to do. So they, they had guidance. They, they knew what they needed to do. That's why by the time a young guy is 13 in, in the Jewish, in the Jewish um, calendar, when they're 13 years old, they be, they considered men or young ladies considered to the woman because they begin to teach them the things that they need to do to become a man or to become a woman from their very small. So I want you to understand education is very important. Listen to me. It's good to operate on the gift but after a while, can I tell you that you'll sound like a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. You won't make no sense after a while. You'll run out of gas. You'll just be running on air because the gift has to be developed. God has to begin, you have to begin to find yourself and you have to go to the place of where you are not just sitting on Sunday hearing the word of, yes, praise the Lord, but you have to also educate yourself. Enroll in a school. Get yourself educated. Listen to great men of God like Dr. Miles Monroe, persons like Dr. T.D. Jakes, people who are speaking life and who are telling you and giving you principles. These people are giving you principles for free. You have Max Lacato, you have a one minute video. They're, they're some chance. They're giving you information for free on how to develop, but we go buy it. So I want you to know, today, you don't have to be an uncharted gift. Today you don't have to be known because you know what? Even though you might be in a place today where you don't know how to function, the Holy Spirit is speaking to you right now and letting you know that it's not over until I say it's over. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So I'm going to read Acts 2 and this is about Paul. Paul was saying, I am a Jew. A man born in Tarsus of Sicily and brought up in the city at the feet of Gamaliel. Having been instructed according to the exactness of the law of our fathers, being a zealous, being a zealous one of God, even as you all are today. Paul was letting the people know, listen, I didn't just happen. I didn't just drop out of the sky. I didn't just born, you know, sometimes we tell our children, I didn't I wasn't born yesterday. I know what you did. I don't know who you think you're fooling, but I know what you did. What you're saying is I have some knowledge and wisdom in that area that you're trying to deceive me in. So Paul was letting the people know just in case you think I don't understand who God is. I sat at the feet of Galamaliel and he taught me the principles and the statutes. They knew the Torah. They knew the word of God. They knew the five books of Moses. So they weren't searching. They weren't, they weren't at the place where they were lack of the wisdom of the Torah. But what it was, was Paul gifts need to be activated for God. Understand, we can have our gifts activated when we're in the world. We can be out there doing stuff, but no activation. Only the Holy Ghost can activate that gift. It's only him that put the gift in there. We can operate on the gifts, but the gifts don't give God no glory. But when we come into Christ, the power, the fire, and the baptism of the Holy Ghost is where the gifts become activated. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Our next step, and I hope you're listening to me today. Hallelujah. I I hope to encourage you on today. Our third step is environment. When you are walking and you have a gift, and your gift is uncharted, being unknown to you, but known by others, I want to say to you, you need a place where you can grow. Now, there are a lot of persons who are rootless, and I've had a lot of persons that came to the ministry, and they want to tell you what to do, and this is how they do it when they were there, and this is what they were taught, and that's, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it's hard to really try to get those persons to come to the place of where they need to understand that they need to realign, that they have some steps missing, that what they've been taught, a lot of things that they've been taught, that's good, but they're not there yet. They have to go back and fill in these steps so they can understand who they are. Because most of those people are the most messed up in the mind people. They are messed up. They would come up here and shout a good message, but they can't. They When as simple as a bill coming in their mail, they trip out, they drink, they smoke, they cuss, because the gift is uncharted and not activated in the way that it should be. Let me tell you something, because people will use your gift, they'll pimp your gift, but if there's no activation of the gift through Christ Jesus, that means what's going to happen is that gift is going to be dormant and not being used in full extent to give God the glory. If your gift is not giving God the glory, then it's not activated. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Holy Spirit gives gifts and he's the one who activates the gift. So we have to be in an environment. So I'm going to read 1 Kings 19 19 and 19 through 21. And this is the call of Elisha. So Elijah went from there 
and found Elijah, the son of Shaphat. He was plowing with 12 yokes of oxen, and he himself was driving the 12th prayer. Pair. Elijah went up to him and threw his cloak around him. Elijah then left the oxen and ran after him. Let me kiss my mother and father goodbye, he said, and I will come with you. So Elijah went with him. Elijah left and went back. He took his yoke of oxen and slaughtered them. <laughs> he buried them, the plowing, he buried the plowing equipment and cooked the meat and gave it to the people and they ate. Then he sat out to follow Elijah to become his servant. For those of you that are gifted, your uncharted gift, you need to learn to serve. If you cannot be a servant, God will never trust you. The servant is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. If you cannot follow nobody, can't follow no instruction, your pastor or leader is giving you instruction, you there telling someone, child, I ain't doing that. Your pastor is telling you what to do, and you say, I ain't, I ain't got that to do. Child, uh -uh, I ain't talking to me. I don't go for me because, you know, I, I got it all together. I want to let you know today, Elijah became a servant. That means he submitted himself willfully. He killed his ox, burned up everything because he knew <laughs> The minute he come in contact with Elijah, he knew, because he knew Elijah was a prophet, so he knew what he was called to do. Everybody knew that Elijah was a man of God. Everybody knew that Elijah was called by God. Everybody heard about Elijah. Ahab hated Elijah because Elijah went and spoke what God said. So I want you to understand. So Elijah knew, oh my God, he had an environment he could grow. Because he was walking and talking with the man of God. In other words, he was serving the man of God. He didn't allow Elijah to go, oh, Elijah, you know, you have some little thing in your eye. Sir, let me get... He was a servant. He was making sure he gave them water. He was making sure that he had food. He was making sure because he, he... What he did was he ordered the gift. He knew that Elijah had something that he needed. But in this day and season, because of so many persons uh, just looking and capitalizing on these uncharted gifts uh, and putting people in places where they don't need to be. I've been guilty of it and I tell you it was chaotic but thanks be to God only for the grace and mercy of God that I survived many seasons. But I want to encourage you on today uh, when you see the gift it's okay. Let's get these people in a place of where they can be trained and developed. Even if we have and that's why you'll have a lot of people they'll go around calling themselves the house prophet because somebody told them they're the house prophet. They don't understand how to respect and how to honor their leaders. They don't understand how they need to sit because they have been pimped. An uncharted gift. They didn't know. It was unknown. And the thing about it is, the sad part about it is, even though they've been working all these years in ministry, guess what? They're still uncharted. Because they're not on the map of heaven. God don't even understand that. They're uncharted because they are known. And where they should be known. There are people where the world should know them. Their neighbors even don't know them. Their, their jobs don't even know who they are. <laughs> their home, their, their homes and people don't, they don't even know that they're saved. So you have these uncharted gifts that are going from place to place. Seeking, trying to find who they are. Wretched. And they're, they're distracting and they're, they're self-destructing because they can't seem to find a way out. It's hard for you to be doing something for 10 years and then somebody say, I need you to sit here for two years. Just sit in the front, come to church and clap your hands and enjoy the service. Hmm, that ain't God, child. <laughs> they trying to destroy my gift. They trying to keep me from preaching. They trying to keep the Saul and David thing. You you begin to think all sorts of things, but that's not it. You have some real leaders out there who care about God people and who want to see God people activated. Paul was a, a great example, and, and I want uh, Paul. What Paul did and brings me bring me to my next bring me brings me to my next um um step, which is my next step is ever evaluate now. My next step, I'm sorry, is experience. So what Paul did was when when they were when 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 he was working with Timothy and Barnabas, what he did was he made sure he taught them, he laid hand on them, and he sent them out. He taught them, he laid hand on them, and he sent them out. You can't send people. I've heard people say, "You when I'm going evangelizing, have you been before? No. Do you know what to do? No." I've heard people say, well, you know, God tell me to do this. God tell me to do the tent. God tell me to do walks. God tell me to do this. And which he could have. But if God going to tell you to do something, he's a wise God. Anytime God call a prophet, he allowed them to be taught by another prophet so that they can learn the statutes and how to hear from God. Samuel was the greatest prophet in Israel. 
Did he grow up with his father? He grew up with Eli. Eli was a priest. He grew up in the house of the Lord. What was he being doing? He was being taught. He got exposure. He got experience. My God, he was in an environment where he could hear God. So when God called him, he was able to hear his voice clearly. He just didn't know who it was, but his, he was activated in that moment because now God put a signature upon him and God began to give him a word that he needed to give to Eli. I want you to hear me well. Everywhere in the Bible, persons who were called by God were in a place where they were trained. The next step is experience. And we need experience. And so Elijah, after Elijah had followed Elijah for a while, there were four steps before Elijah went in the, in the chariot of fire. The first step was at Gilgal. And Gilgal is a place of separation. And then you have, the next step is Bethel. Remember, Jacob, um, Jacob was at the place where he built an altar and called it Bethel, which is the house of God. And then Elijah went to Jericho, and Jericho was walking by faith. Remember what the children of Israel did? They walk around the wall seven times, and the wall came down. And then he went to the uh, last stop is Jordan. Now, you remember Jordan? We have the sound Jordan River, Chilean coal. But this is where they went. The children, before the children of Israel crossed to go to the promised land, was the river Jordan. And so this was the place where Elijah was taken up. Now here it is. Elijah already had experience. So when Elijah left, Elijah wasn't trying to find his way and trying to figure out what he needed to do. All he needed to do, he picked up that staff. He picked up that mantle. My God from Zion. And he went to the Jordan River. He said, the God of Elijah, the same God that was with Elijah, my God from Zion. And when he struck the waters, whatever, the miracle happened for him as it did for Elijah. The same thing happened to Joshua. Joshua said, the God of Moses. And so they understood because they had the experience and we need to understand we need to get the experience that is needed our last step is evaluation don't go before your leaders send you what happens a lot of times is you love people sidebarring you and telling you how anointed you are and maybe you are and which you are that's beautiful but you still have to know who you are and you have to know when to sub you have to know that you are submitted and I'm not when I say submitted I'm not talking as a slave or being pimped. When I say submitted, I'm not talking about just, you know, in an ungodly way, on a way that is unpleasing to God. So I need you to understand this. So Elisha was totally submitted to the man of God because he knew that he would be the next one to fulfill or to walk in, in the steps of Elijah. So there's an evaluation. All right, woman of God, I see who you are. And I see that you've been serving and God is real pleased with you. Now I'm ready to, God wants to elevate you. But we don't wait for that. We elevate ourselves. We elevate people with giving them a certificate. I've seen so many people have a certificate just by the laying of their hands. That's beautiful. But what about the other part where they're supposed to be taught and, and, and taught in the things of God and understand character, character, understand character building. There's so many things to be taught. How to pray, what to do when warfare comes. How to give. There's so many lessons that they need to learn before they even get to the mic. I'm telling you, there's so many things that they need to know before they get to the mic. Before they can even hold this mic, they need to start from the parking lot. And then move their way up to the mic. And you might say, well, I'm not doing all that. That's fine. And you might not have to start at the parking lot. That's true. You might just have to start at the usher. You might not even have to start at the usher. You might, have, you might just be starting wherever you're starting. You might start in the choir. You might start at the praise team. But I want to say to you again. Do the first work over. God has given you a second win and a second chance. Yes, you've been pimped. Yes, you've been wrong. And you might think that you're hearing God. Don't forget the Bible say the angel, uh, the, the Satan can appear as an angel of light and speak and make you feel the same. If you don't have a prayer life, you're not hearing God. I can tell you that. If you don't have a prayer life, you don't spend time with God. My God, I'm, you know, I've heard people who don't spend time with God at all and they're saying they're hearing God all the time. No, God, let me tell you something. You have to go through so much warfare when you are hearing the voice of God. And I say so much warfare, especially if you're trying to get a word to God people. You, he speaks now. You can hear him. But God is not speaking to you or giving you a word for people all the time. And he can he can, but you watch how he operates. There was a time he came and he would talk to the prophets and they would take a word. I want to say to those of you who are uncharted gifts and you're frustrated, you might have left the church and you might say, I don't want nothing to do with the church. I don't want nothing to do with these pastors. They're evil. They're wicked. Okay, we accept that. 
But we, I want you to know that Jesus Christ is calling you today. And he's saying to you today, I want to restore you. I want to realign you. I want to get you to the place where you need to be. I want, to, I want you to know that I've been watching you and I see your pain and I hear your cry and I see your frustration. And I know that you have you have started and, and, and you were put with spiritual steroids and you grew too fast and you don't understand. Now you're suffering because it was not your fault. God said, I want to give you a second chance, but I need you to come humbly. I need you to forget about everything that has gone on. Forget about all the pain. Forget about all the hurt. Forget about all the things that you went through. Forget about all how, how you were hurted by your leader, hurt by people in the church. Forget about how they lied on you. Forget about how they talked about you. Forget about how they make you feel. God said, it is me calling you now. I'm talking to you and I'm saying to you, I want you to do your first work over again. I want to put you back to the place of where I, the Lord your God, will show you and teach you great and mighty things. I will begin to show you who you are and what I've called you to be. I'll begin to take out all the things. I'll give you a heart of flesh. God say, the Bible says in the the book of Jeremiah, he said the clay was marred in the hands of the potter. He said, but I will make you into a new clay. God said, if you give me the opportunity and if you yield yourself to me, I will make you into a new clay. Paul laid his hand and sent Timothy out, sent Barnabas out. I want you to know Jesus had 70 disciples. And he sent them out. He taught them. And he sent them out to pray and to to do the works. And they came back rejoicing. Saying, wow, Jesus. Wow, you wouldn't believe it. Man, demons, look here. We saw so much miracles. Eyes were open. And Jesus was like, that's good. But at the end of the day, he taught them the most valuable lesson. I want you to make sure that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Don't get carried away that you're caught up in what you're doing. That you that you you gain the whole world and lose your own soul. What a sad morning. There's a song that says that there'll be a weeping and wailing when the lost the toll of their fate. They cried to the rocks and the mountain. They prayed, but their prayers was too late. You want to be in that place where God said, don't pray for these people. Where he leaves us to a reprobate mind. The Savior is calling you and saying, come home, prodigal daughter. Come home, prodigal son. Your gift is to be discovered. Your gift don't have to be uncharted where people just see the bad attitude. Where people just see the evil. But God said, now I want to refine you. I want to remold you. I want to remodel you. I want to renovate you. I want to put you in the place of who you are. So you can know that I have chosen you before the foundation of the world. Before your mama met your daddy, I've chosen you. I've placed a gift on the inside of you. And my plans for you have not changed. Uncharted gift. I don't care wayward child. I don't care what you're doing out there. The same is saying, come home. Yes, you've made many mistakes. You've made so many mistakes, too much to number. But God is saying, let's forget about all of that. And come on home. I'm calling you home. Because there's nothing that I cannot do. He said to the children of Israel and Isaiah, he said... Let us reason together. Although your sin be red as crimson, I can make them white as snow. God is calling you prodigal son. Yes, you. You've gotten yourself into so much things. You were in the church, but you got strung on drugs. You in the church, but you got back into dealing drugs. You in the church, but you got back into pimping. You in the church, but you got back into robbing. You in the church, but you got back into the old habits. God has said, come. I love you. My love is not changed for you. Just like the first day you were with me, the first day you had an encounter with me, my love, my love is so unconditional that I'm just waiting on you to just say to me, God, I'm ready. God, I want to change. I want to say to you today that you are important. You matter not just to, to God, but you matter, you matter to the world. God, you matter because there's something that you're called to do. And until your gifts are activated, you're wretched and you're miserable. And you feel in a dry place. You go in the church Sunday after Sunday. And you're lifting your hands. You're singing. But you feel like a zombie. You're a zombie walking on earth. And God did not call you to be a zombie. But he said, my God from Zion. That I called you. As unto myself. He called him. He said, go. And preach my gospel. Go and tell them. It's not too late. If that's you today. And you do not know the Lord. Oh, you say, I want to rededicate myself. I, I, that's me, woman of God. I, I'm backslid. And I'm too ashamed. You have no need to be ashamed. The blood of Jesus cleanses everything. He makes you white as snow. I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I recognize 
that I'm a sinner in need of your grace. Come into my heart and be my Lord and personal Savior from this day forward. Say, Holy Spirit, teach me to follow Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to pray for those of you, those prodigal sons and prodigal daughters who are so hurt, you are deeply hurt, and it seems like you can't get on that cage. I command them every chain by the power of the Holy Ghost invested on the inside of me. I command every shackle to be loose in the name of Jesus. Of your mind in the name of Jesus. I command right now every power that is not of God, that is oppressing you today to be loose in the name of Jesus. You shall come forth as as, as life came forth out of the grave. Today you must take off your grave clothes. Today is your day of activation. Today is your day where the Lord has risen you. Today is your day where Jesus Christ of Nazareth is passing by. Today is your day where the Messiah is calling. He said, come. You that are laden and heavy laden, I will give you rest. There's a rest in God. No matter what you have done, and no matter where you are today, the Savior said, come. He's beckoning you to come. He said, come, child. Don't think about what you're doing. Don't think about what you're doing. Don't forget about what you're doing right now. This is their moment and say, God, I just need you. Just lay before and say, God, I need you. I, I can't do this without you. I've been trying. I feel like I'm losing my mind. I can't sleep at night. God, everything in my life seems to be turning upside down. Father, I need you in my life. I, I, I don't know how to get back to you. And God is saying, just reach your arms and say, Lord Jesus, I'm ready. I'm ready. Please, Jesus, help me. Sometimes you don't know how to pray. You just call on Jesus and say, Jesus, I'm a mess. Jesus, my heart is impure. I have impure thoughts. I have a horrible heart, Lord. I'm full of pride, Lord. I'm full of envy and jealousy, God. I'm full of so many things, Lord. But I know, God, that you can change me. I know that you can make me over again. I know that you can help me, Lord. If you don't help me, God, I will be like them that fall in the pit. Father, I need your help. Father, I need you to visit me. Father, I need your presence. Lord, I need you more than I've ever needed you before. And I will give you grace. I will restore you. And I will show you great and mighty things. Things you've never heard of. Things you know not of. Says the Spirit of God. I love you. And you can't change that. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Can separate me from your love. From loving you. Nothing. God said you believe it. And you receive it today, you are restored. God said the day if you say that prayer and you have the faith, prodigal son, prodigal daughter, He said, Today I've sent my angels to minister to you. Today I see him releasing angels to minister to you, to minister to your soul, to give you what you need. I see chains broken, I see chains falling off. Rabba Shakanda Baseto, Roman de la Mosaya, Rakanda la Mosia. No more. You will not be an uncharted gift. But you are going to be what God has called you to be. Today, I want you to know the king has a robe, has a ring, and has some shoes for you. Don't stay in the pig pen. That's not what you're called to be. You're called to be a son and a daughter. And so this morning, if you're afraid with me, please. Visit my website at www.sherilynfletcher.com. I have prayers there. Contact me. I want to help you on this journey. My passion, my passion is to see God's people liberated. My passion is to see God's people set free. My passion is to see people fall out of dungeon. My passion, because I understand what it means when you're frustrated and you're chained and you're caged and you're screaming and nobody can hear you and you're asking for help. But instead of people seeing the help, they see a bad attitude and you're asking for help and some people here see that you're saying help they see that you're what they think you're boastful you're screaming for help instead of people see you screaming for help they see a pitiful person people tell me I look like I don't need help I don't know how how to look like I need help I don't know why I'm supposed to tear off my clothes and walk in one shoe and I don't know what how to look like I need help but I need help Peter said, when thou art converted, then 
glory of us. Jesus has set me free. And he'll do the same for you. He wants to set you free. Today, your mind, you will no longer struggle in your mind. You will no longer struggle with your identity. You will no longer struggle with who you are. Today, the fire of God is falling upon you even now. Yes, the spirit of the living God is falling upon you now. I feel its presence. And I want you to know today, those dreams and vision that you saw of yourself, God is going to bring them to pass. He's called you to make an indelible mind. He's called you to defeat demons. He's called you to eradicate darkness. And you will walk in his divine purpose. I pray, Lord, I pray for everyone that has watched this broadcast. You see their struggles. You see their needs. Father, you are God. And beside you, there is none other. Father, I pray today that your people, as they hear this word today, God, shackles, chains, cages will be loose. I pray today, God, addictions will be broken. Generational curses will be uprooted and destroyed because of the anointing. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you for liberating your people. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The way you are, there is liberty. We give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. God bless you on this morning. And God keep you. Please don't forget to hit me up on my website. I want to help you. I want to pray with you. I want to be a part of that journey. I want to help you to get from milk to meat. I want to help you get from milk to meat. So if you get from milk to meat, you can help somebody else. And so God bless you today. And may God keep you. This is my prayer. Hallelujah.